Darth Vader space hater asthmatic dictator bomb the trader Joe's when he saw it selling sandpaper Darth Vader space spray the mouth like a cheese grater kids talking shit he pull up with a lightsaber the Darth Vader comics are really really sad behind all the action and the iconic one-liners we get a painfully beautiful look at a man who's lost everything these comics are rich with these genuinely devastating moments of suffering contrasted by the awe-inspiring sci-fi world which surrounds them and underneath all of that death and destruction, there's always a glimmer of hope. For those who don't know, Star Wars is, or at least was meant to be, the story of Anakin Skywalker, the good-natured hero who tried to save the people he cared about, and in doing so became the very thing he feared most. When you're a kid, you don't care about characterization. you just want to see people spinning around and getting chopped up. So when I'd watch it on DVD, I'd just skip over all of the important character building. But as I got older, I became more aware of the expertly crafted world building, the lovable dynamics between the characters, and the significance of certain moments. Anakin's redemption at the end isn't special because, oh, he turned good, he learned the power of family like I thought when I was younger. It's actually way more depressing than that. Throughout his whole life, Anakin was plagued by a lack of freedom. He was born into the slave trade, where his abusive owner would take advantage of his technical skills. But it's whatever. Anakin gets to become a Jedi and learn the ways of the Force, and a, oh wait, it's actually a really abusive system which forces him to repress all of his trauma, hormones, or attachment to any living thing in the known universe. Despite fighting their wars for them, despite bringing them countless victories for their Republic, the Jedi still take advantage of his natural power and blatantly ignore what he has to say about it. And so when Palpatine comes along, the father figure he never had, someone who finally understands him, hey I get that the Jedi are using you, I get that you have these romantic feelings that are forbidden, join me and everything will be fine, of course he gives in. But again, Palpatine is just using him for personal gain, and Anakin ends up paying for it. He sacrifices his moral code, his best friend's trust, and the love of his life. And after losing everything, after being left so hideously scarred and deformed, he has nothing left but his loyalty to Palpatine. He's gone too far to turn back, and so he has no choice but to spend the next 20 years as an emotionally tortured puppet. All of this is changed by his son, Luke. The only person who hasn't lost faith in him, who hasn't been corrupted by him or murdered by him. And so when he sees Palpatine taking advantage of Luke, when he sees history repeating itself, Anakin finally has enough. For the first time in his life, he exercises freedom and makes the first choice that is truly his. Having been told to repress his feelings and the love that he has for others, it's that same love for his son which prevails and ends up saving the day. And all of that context of Anakin's fight for freedom makes this moment way more impactful. I'll not leave you here, I've got to save you. You already have. Okay, yes, very sad, but this here is a complete story. There's a through line of these themes of freedom and suffering and redemption in these six movies. If you're gonna break that line, if you're gonna explore more parts of the story in another medium such as comics, you're gonna have to be consistent. If you fuck it up, you risk damaging the reputation of an iconic character and diminishing the effects of his sacrifice. But if you play it safe, if you just give people more of the same thing, then what was the point? So, what can the comics do that the movies can't? Well, for starters, scale. With the power of a pencil, you can tell any fucking story you want without having to worry about budget. You can go to any planet, you can visit any character, you can bring Luke Skywalker back without having to give him weird CGI lips. But despite this freedom, the writers still have to adhere to the movies and make sure Anakin doesn't stray too far from that narrative path. What's more, anyone who's reading these comics have seen the movies. We all know what happens in the end, which makes telling a compelling story just a little bit more challenging. So, did they pull it off? Were the writers able to use this beloved character and his already established arc to tell a new and ambitious story which takes advantage of the medium while also being incredibly restricted by the timeline of the Star Wars universe and pressured by its bloodthirsty fanbase which will send you death threats to your whole extended family if you dare disrespect fucking Mr. Bleepy Scissor Legs over here? There's a scene in Charles Sewell's run in which Anakin has had enough of his pain and stands before Palpatine, proclaiming himself as a Jedi once more. He slaughters Palpatine with ease, and leaves his old life of cruelty and cowardice behind. We then jump forward to a strange new planet, where Anakin confronts his old best friend, Obi-Wan. Anakin reveals his identity and begs to him, either for forgiveness or to be put out of his misery. It's a gut-wrenching scene, but just as Obi-Wan recognises his former companion, just as they're about to have a heartfelt conversation, the whole thing is revealed to be one of Anakin's forced-induced nightmares. Now we've all been guilty at some point in our lives of writing the phrase, 
it was just a dream, or then they woke up and had spaghetti for tea. And yeah, that's fine if it's a school writing project and that sentence is all that stands between you and hunting your fellow children for sport, but in a professional work, it is the biggest kick in the face to any reader to be told, hey, see that cool stuff you just saw? Yeah, wasn't real. But what makes this scene an exception is how it plays on the reader's foreknowledge. We know from the start that this isn't real, because we know that Palpatine can't die at this point, we know that Anakin doesn't redeem himself until years later. So that last panel is more of an inevitability than a betrayal. But despite it being a dream, these events are all within Anakin's reach. He is more powerful than Palpatine, he could easily turn his back on the dark side and prevent the deaths of millions, but he doesn't. He surrenders his control yet again, and it's because of the mental slavery he's suffered from his whole life. Anakin is trapped in the same way that the writers are trapped by the wider story. They can't allow him to do these things, and so they torment him with it. And it perfectly fits in with his already established arc, while also offering something new. Mwah. These comics are constantly doing this. They're always playing off the movies and adding their own new layer of depression. There will be these brief, precious moments where a character will make a reference to something from the past, and then the comic comes to a standstill. There will be a silent flashback to that particular moment, and then we'll get a panel like this. There's no action, no speech bubbles, and yet you can still feel his emotion fucking radiating off the page as a fleeting moment of happiness and love is quickly turned into one of anguish and regret. I know I'm talking about a Star Wars comic like it's the complete works of William Shakespeare, but just let me enjoy this. Anakin will then respond, trying to move on, and suddenly a cheesy, villainous one-liner is transformed into something far more devastating. There will also be scenes where Anakin is solemnly staring into the depths of space, which by itself is pretty cool imagery, you know, makes for a good wallpaper, but it reminds me of a throwaway line in the first movie. Anakin was brought up in poverty on a backwater planet, so he's never left his hometown, the only knowledge of the galaxy being his own imagination. So when these Jedi show up, these people who have been all across the cosmos, he's really curious and asks them a bunch of questions. One night they're looking up at the sky, and he asks if there's ever been someone who's gone to every single star. When Qui-Gon tells him it's not likely, Anakin claims that he's going to be the first person to visit all of them. It's a really bittersweet moment, and it's not because he doesn't get to fulfil this dream, it's because he does. As Darth Vader, Anakin has the whole galaxy at his disposal. As he stands on the command deck, he is closer to his dream than ever before, but at the same time he has nothing. These stars are a painful reminder of his childhood and all that he's lost, and how despite being poor, despite being stuck on that one shitty planet, he still had his mother, he still had his friends, he still had his cool little robots, and he sees all of that as he now terrorises the planets he once looked up to. It's also rather fitting when he learns that he has a son. His raw emotion seeps out through the force, and the ship's window starts cracking. He realises that his past is not quite dead, and the symbol of his pain and loss slowly shatters around him. Because they take place between the two trilogies, these comics serve as the transition between the death of an old era and the rise of a new. Anakin is tasked with wiping out his past, revisiting the elements of the prequel era. It's a strange mixture of nostalgia and sadness, as you see these repurposed weapons or droids from the movies, desperately holding on to the old era before they go extinct. The friendly protocol droids that Anakin built as a kid are replaced by murderous psychopaths whose charming behaviour only acts as a false sense of security for their victims, and minor characters such as the librarian from the Jedi Temple are now hunted down as the last of their kind. This cleansing of the old to make room for the new culminates in the devastating final issue of Soul's Run, which is not only my favourite Star Wars issue, but the issue that perfectly represents Anakin's journey. Anakin has opened a mysterious gateway using the Force, to what he believes is the key to resurrecting his dead wife. As he passes through this gateway, he is removed from his physical body and forced to experience a number of visions. He sees his child self learning of what he'll become and being completely traumatised by it. All of the cheesy, borderline cringeworthy lines from the movies are now repackaged as these dark, haunting words scattered around the page. Anakin is forced to fight and brutally kill all of his former masters at the Jedi Temple, even impaling Yoda through the fucking chest. 
He is then forced to watch Obi-Wan and Palpatine fight to the death, which Palpatine wins by turning Obi-Wan into a skeleton. I don't know if he's going in for a high five here or... Having killed Palpatine, Anakin is finally met with the soul of his long-lost wife. As soon as he sees her, he reverts back to his old self, and begs her to come back with him to the land of the living, to which she responds by saying her husband is dead, and throws herself to her death. Just as Anakin is about to lose her for the second time, he has enough, and so he tries to pull her up using the force, only for a giant bolt of lightning to disintegrate her before his eyes. Anakin cries out and falls to his knees, in what is the culmination of all of his suffering and all that he has lost. All he's left with are the sins he committed in his wife's name, which are now worth nothing. Just then, a giant bolt of blue light erupts from the darkness, and a figure resembling his son emerges. At this sight, Vader is expelled from the vision and wakes up in his own body. This issue is not only a beautiful work of art, but it perfectly captures the three elements that make up Anakin's wider story. The first is a lack of control. Much like his whole life, Anakin is forced into each event and met by the people who made him surrender control. The second is suffering. Anakin is reminded of the loved ones he's lost and watches them die again, cementing the fact that Anakin's suffering is inevitable and seemingly never ending. And the third is hope. That glimmer of hope towards the end that all is not lost and one day someone will bring him back into the light. His entire arc perfectly condensed into 20 pages and in a form that couldn't realistically be done in live action. When you think Star Wars, the last thing that comes to mind is subtle, because on the surface it's far from it. There's striking imagery, cheesy one-liners, and giant orchestras. But despite the presentation, Star Wars is, and always has been, a very grounded and human story, for us to see ourselves in the characters and their situations. Believe it or not, most of us have never been burnt to death or hunted a race to extinction. Well, speak for yourself. But I imagine a lot of us have felt anger towards things out of our control. We know what it's like to be taken advantage of and being completely blind to it at the time. I've seen or heard something that's reminded me of the past, and then I'll be flooded by a wave of painful memories, only to try and shrug it off two seconds later. Anakin's redemption doesn't excuse all the bad things he did. The psychological torture is understandable, but this fucker stood by as billions of people were turned to ash, okay? You gotta draw the line of forgiveness somewhere. But he serves as a lesson, a martyr if you will, that despite how far gone you think things are, despite what you've done in the past, you can always still take control and make things right. It's a rather simple message, but sometimes when life is so chaotic, you just need a bit of simplicity. Also, he's back on Disney+. Plus. Can't wait for all the Star Wars fans to come together and celebrate this fresh new take on- oh fuck. I've seen a frightening amount of people wanting a Disney Plus show about Captain America returning the Infinity Stones, despite the fact that it would add nothing to the story and take away from his character's already established conclusion. I'm all for different opinions, but uh, if you're advocating for this show, just know I'm advocating for your death.